The Arizona Cardinals have officially been eliminated from the playoffs, so we're going to examine how we got here, what big decisions are coming, and why Cardinals fans should have some hope today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day. And a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Joe, I regret to inform you that uh, Aaron Rodgers will not be playing this year. Stunned. Yeah, they did the whole McAfee bit. 14 weeks removed from surgery, you know, quite frankly, we're, we're not not realistically close to being able to go. Uh. Mm. <laughs> Didn't he listen to the Dolphins dick, and all the things he was going to do? You know, the empowerment of I don't, know. I, don't yeah. know. I just know Joe Marino was was commenting on Aaron Rodgers, the GM, and his mm. track record as a recruiter this morning. So, yeah. My only Aaron regret there is I forgot, I, for, I forgot to list Tim Boyle as one of his key acquisitions. Mm. So, I, I, I uh, new acquisition of the Houston Texans. New Houston Texans quarterback, Tim Boyle. Yeah. Now what could, what can go wrong? What can go wrong? All anyway, right. Anyway, here's one. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to be talking about the Arizona Cardinals, and we're doing uh, what went wrong. Or I, I guess for the Cardinals' sake, Joe, it's probably what went right, if we're being honest. They were supposed to be here. This yeah. is not a surprise. They made a strategic decision to reset their organization. Uh, they changed coaches. They changed front office personnel, uh, they how they strategized the 2023 NFL draft kind of gave you some inkling as far as this is this is a long-term scope and build that they were looking towards, which we applauded at the time. Mm-hmm. You looked at how they offloaded some talent. I, I think the Cardinals are right on schedule in spite of the fact that they are sitting here eliminated from the playoffs in week 15 with a 3-11 and 11 record. Yeah, you're you're climbing out of the Cliff Kingsbury, Steve Keim dumpster fire with your starting quarterback missing the nine game first nine games of the season amid a roster reset, right? Like as you said there, you were kind of supposed to be here. The expectations were always low. I think the phrase that I used going into the year for Arizona was this is a get by year for you. And fortunately, you've only got three more games to deal with and you're out of the playoffs, but the expectations were always low. Um just didn't have the roster yet. I mean, you played three different quarterbacks, Josh Dobbs, Clayton Toon, Kyler Murray comes in, uh, what, nine games into the season, brand new system, brand new coaching staff in his first action off of an ACL. You don't have a, enough yet in the skill groups. You don't have enough on your offensive line. You don't have enough on your defense, right? Just personnel wise, it's not there yet. And so I, I think the Cardinals met the expectation in what was a get by year climbing out of this mess that was kind of created by Cliff Kingsbury and Steam Con. Well, a lot of times when you see teams take this kind of strategy, uh, it's with a quarterback in mind. We got to put ourselves in a mm-hmm. position to draft a quarterback and get a found Arizona's in a unique place because they have a quarterback that's on a second contract. And it really just allows like what's the conversation if you are a team that doesn't have a quarterback and you beat the Pittsburgh Steelers by two touchdowns in week 13 to get your third win of the season, it's made out to be a bad thing. But for Arizona, you know, I I think you certainly look at Kyler and him coming back from an injury and he, he showcased some of the abilities that we're so familiar with that made him the first overall pick when Arizona did that for him. But I think it's, I don't say they're playing with house money, but they have a little bit of a different lens in which you look through a rebuilding team because they have that piece and he's back and he's starting to get comfortable with the coaching staff that they have around. 
You're getting a chance to evaluate the players that are here in this transitional year around Kyler to know who we want to keep. We talk about Trey McBride as far as something that went right. We'll talk about that with the Levy Grail. Um, I, I just think they're they're in a really unique position to be a team that's going through this process because of their quarterback situation and the fact that they've shown a lot of fight and they've won a few games and they won a tough game against the Falcons and they had that early season win against the Cowboys. And now you're getting, you know, you're you're looking at you've got one a game in November or December, and you have a chance to win a, another one. You know, you go you go to Chicago this week. Chicago's playing better, but that's a winnable game for Arizona. Maybe you steal one against Seattle week 18. I'd be surprised if you went to Philly and won. But like you, you get a chance to maybe get four or five wins here out of the season. And I think you look at it, you feel really optimistic given how everybody kind of clowned Jonathan Gannon when the hire was first made and you saw the the in-house videos of Shoo, shoo, shoo shots, vertical yeah. shots. You know, like everybody had something to say about Jonathan Cannon, but this team does play hard and they have had some offensive outbursts and some success running the football. And I think there's a lot to like here in spite of the three and 11 record because it's what we expected to see. Mentioned the three and 11 record, and I don't want to do the Levy Grail optimism part of it too soon, but I think as oh. we. Well, I think it's worth mentioning that you started one and seven, and then you get Kyler Murray back under these circumstances, and you're two and three with him, right? I think so. You've seen kind of this uptick, and I do think it's it's a great call out by you to mention that most of the time that a team's in this position, they're angling towards finding their quarterback. And I think Kyler, obviously, based on the contract, you're probably going to stick with him. And I think seeing that already start to look like a good choice with with the turnaround and how much more competitive you've been with him mm -hmm. is is very very encouraging, especially when there's just not enough around him right now for him to really play his best football. So I think that little two and three stretch with like you mentioned a few minimal winnable games here the rest of the way positions them well to attack this off season to build and start to really get this operation going in the direction that Monty Austin Fort and Jonathan Gannon wanted to go. Well, and, and I would just point to this too. You want to look at your identity as a team. This team runs the ball pretty well. Yeah, they and have. they're averaging almost yeah. five yards a carry as a team. 4.9 yards per pop. They only have four games this season where they have had less than 120 team Rushing yards cumulatively at the end of the game. They have a couple of 200 spots. They put 234 on the 49ers. I understand, you know, San Francisco scored 45. So they get out in front. So they're playing the pass. So I, I get that element of that. But you put 222 on Dallas. And I understand yeah. they were missing some guys up front. But regardless, you have had a lot of success running the football it's an identity you have a quarterback that can run so there's that element of design quarterback run game that you're going to have with kyler murray moving forward uh you got a tight end that's a, that's a really uh diverse player you know i i love some of the elements of this football team and i, I know we're supposed to do the levy grail but I, I just keep coming back to my expectations were zero yeah and we we got a lot more than zero so like what went wrong feels like Nothing went wrong. <laughs> like, it's a, it's right. okay to have a transitional year. They embrace that. Yeah. Yep. All right. We're going to shift gears to the off-season decisions that are coming for the Arizona Cardinals. So stick with us. But, folks, you got to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest, most exciting, easiest, funnest way to play daily fantasy sports. I love this format. It's just you against numbers. It's not you against thousands of other players including pros, including sharks. It's just you against numbers. Here's what you do. You select two or more players. You pick more or less of their projected stats, and you place your entry. That's it. It doesn't take long. Picks can be made in under a minute, and then when you win, the withdrawals are super, super quick. And I also love that you can cross-pollinate between sports. So maybe you're looking at tomorrow. It's Thursday night football, and you want to get in on that. Maybe there's a hockey game and a basketball game that you want to kind of layer together to build that entry that you really like. Uh, so check it out. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL. 
for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, so now we get into the part of the program where we talk about what the Cardinals need to do moving forward. And do you want to start with the uh, pending free agents slash expiring contract decision making, or do you want to start with this uh, NFL draft capital element? I want to start with this. Let's, I want to acknowledge, and not that this is a big discussion point, but I think it's it's and this may not be true for a lot of the, the these episodes that we do, right? Every team that doesn't make the playoffs, that you're going to get an episode like this. For a lot of those, we're probably going to be talking about important decisions when it comes to your front office and your coaching staff. Probably not the case with Arizona, right? Like you're right. you're going to roll with Austin Fort and his crew, Gannon and his crew. And so as you approach all of this, you should really be executing the vision that you pitched to Michael Bidwell last offseason and the continuation of that. And so I think that puts him in a good position here to not have to worry about coaching in front office. You're worrying about a roster. And I think that mm-hmm. puts them in a good position here to attack these decisions. So from there, I mean, yeah, let's get into it. I mean, $56 million in cap space. That's the ninth most in the NFL. And I, I don't look at these expiring contracts and have a lot of concern. I'm sure you have it up. You want to work through it, but there's not a whole lot of like big decisions here. No, I'm I'm not stressed about, and you mentioned the cap space perspective. So anybody that you want to bring back, you should have the ability to bring back no questions asked. Um, yeah. But th- it, it's a blank slate type of team. They offloaded a lot of expiring contracts that had value already to get more assets. Um, Hollywood Brown. It's the biggest one. What's your ceiling to pay Hollywood Brown? Because I think he's a, he's a player that obviously has value. He's the only player on the team with more than 100 targets. They He was a part of a first-round pick swap from the previous regime. I just I, I get uncomfortable if we're getting above like $10, $11 million per season. So relative to kind of his performance, the type of receiver that he is, the wide receiver market, the, mm-hmm. I – if he wants to go find that payday from somebody else to be their big play threat elsewhere, I wouldn't get into a bidding war with myself for Hollywood Brown is what I'm saying. See it pretty similarly. Uh, 26 years old. Obviously, we know the vertical ability, the speed dynamic, and what that can mean with Kyler Murray. I think if you do make a commitment to Hollywood Brown, I I wouldn't overcommit, but I'd also commit to finding another weapon here in this passing game i like what you have in trey mcbride i like what marquise brown can can do for you and in the spacing component of what he brings to the team but i think you need some some more volume guys that you're going to want to funnel more through to allow to allow marquise brown to be that big play threat i don't want him to be a 150 target guy for my offense and so i i attack that decision with that in mind um and yeah I, i don't this isn't like a $20 million, you know, four years, 80 million type situation. I think I think that's where you can get yourself in trouble. Recognize what he can bring and pay him appropriately, but also I'm not sweating bullets here. I'm not sweating bullets over it at all. Well, and there's it's well, a really good wide receiver class, and you got a ton yeah. of, of options. Yeah. So it's it's not something I would handcuff myself to a bigger contract that I might regret two years from now when I'm further fleshed out with my roster and then I look at how I spent that money. Now, maybe if you wanted to or really committed to bringing him and you feel like he's a good fit in your locker room, whatever, you could front load this contract a little bit sure. and reduce the the hits down the road. Yeah. But I would just hate to, hate to make the big investment there in a young receiver and then get the rest of my roster filled out and then like lament deferred money a little later down the line when things get a little tighter. I don't think there's another expiring contract that is a big needle mover we're talking depth players aging players that you're happy their contracts are up yeah so as they continue to reset and flush and build i think this expiring this list of expiring contracts is quite favorable not to mention you've already got 56 million dollars before you've created any cap space and i think when it comes to creating more cap space i think there's a few things to look at i think there's two contracts that stand out to me 
one of them being Jalen Thompson, who is a really good player for them. I think he's been one of their more consistent pieces of the of their of their team, really. If they wanted to restructure there, they can create five million dollars in cap space. The other one is DJ Humphreys. Kind of an interesting dynamic here. He's been your left tackle, and you just drafted Paris Johnson, and he played right tackle this past year. DJ Humphreys, you can restructure to save $10 million, or you can get out of the deal uh, and cut him and free up $9 million. Uh, you, you just kind of have to ask yourself, what's your long, longer-term play with DJ Humphreys, and how does Paris Johnson fit into that conversation? But, like, it's right. Marquise Brown, these two contracts to consider for – uh, restructures, and then the the Booter Baker deal, where then none of that fourteen million dollars next year is guaranteed. Yeah, uh, the, on the club option, he was obviously re- requested a trade in the summer. They kind of reworked that deal a little bit. He's owed some some good money uh, for twenty twenty four, but as you said, there, there's not guarantees there, so it gives you a lot of flexibility with what you want to do with Buddha in general. And as a player who, I, I think you probably ask yourself what you're paying Buddha, the fact that you're going to have to readdress the contract situation in another year anyway. Are you going to be competitive this year? Is Buddha Baker going to be a lifetime Cardinal? Like those, those, there's, there's some layers into that conversation that I think make it pretty interesting where uh, he is kind of the one piece that they held on to <laughs> amidst all of, uh, yeah. the, the Josh Jones trade, right, is just an example of like a, a viable NFL offensive lineman gets traded to Houston. Um, it's just a, one example of that. And then you you thought, surefire, okay, you got a big money safety. They're not going to be competitive this year. They'll move on. And they didn't. And they actually gave him a raise. So yeah. Yeah. I, I think that that makes it a, a probably not as black and white of a conversation. I, it feels like there's with what, how long yeah. Baker's been there and what he's been with that team. There's probably some extra layers there. And I don't think you have a wrong answer, but they certainly yeah. should explore all their options. I'm I'm really fascinated by their fifth year option decision that they have to make on Zaven Collins. Uh, if they were to pick up his fifth fifth year option, that would be twelve point two million dollars fully guaranteed to him in 2025. And they've really changed the way they're playing Zaven Collins, kind of more of a hybrid, mostly an off ball player in his first two seasons for Jonathan Gannon, he's playing on the edge. And I think he's playing his best football in the right spot. Not that he's this like high impact player, but I think he's at least a a serviceable starter that I think is playing in his first year in the role that he always should have been playing in. And what does that look like moving forward? And and honestly, $12.2 million isn't a crazy commitment to him if you wanted to to make it. And so I, I would understand both sides here. But that's one of their more fascinating decisions as we're spending time right now looking at the decisions that they have to make. This yeah. one on Zayvon Collins is pretty fascinating. I I would, and I know I said this for another team that we just did, I would pass and I would want another year of body of work in the system. Yeah, And then I would proactively approach a contract extension anyway. Because if if all goes well and you exercise the fifth year option, you're going to use the $12 million fully guaranteed as the base of your signing bonus for whatever contract extension he would get anyway. I can't imagine as a a former first round pick that they would not give him an extension if he plays well next year anyway. The contrast is it's one year in the new position. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to sign myself up for the lump sum. And then if it doesn't go well, you either eat all of it or he's here and he's not good or you trade him to somebody else and you have to eat money just to get him off the roster anyway. Yeah, they I would did want enough the of that this year. being in Arizona spot. Right. Right. Yeah, this was the, this was the take your medicine year, which is good. If you can bake it into a year like this, a get by year where you have all that dead cap for Hopkins and Simmons and Ertz, right? There's a, there's the dead cap situation for Arizona is a CVS receipt. All right. Uh, but it's the right year to do that. I think anytime that there's a, a rebuild, there's always going to be a take your medicine year. And if you can do that in year one, that's great because typically you can't. It's typically year two where that medicine year comes. And I think it's good to get that out of the way for Arizona in 2023. Joe, 29% of the salary cap this year is dead cap for Arizona. Yeah, dude, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> so like you said, like yeah. bake it in up front. You kind of know what yeah. you're getting, what you're not. Now, as a contrast 
their 2024 dead cap is only 5%. So you're getting an extra quarter of the salary cap back. Next it's nice, season right? Upcoming. It, yeah, put it to good use, right? Yeah. Uh, just a, a quick yeah. outline of their draft capital before we move on to Levy Grill. I know that's something that we can uh, talk about uh, from that lens as well. But they have two first-round picks, their own in Houston's. They have a second round pick, their own. They have two third round, three third round picks, excuse me, their yep. own Tennessee's and Houston's. And then they have their own fourth round pick, their own fifth round pick, Houston's fifth round pick, and then a slew of, of sevens along with Minnesota six as a part of the Josh Dobbs deal. So 13 of them. They get a boat. 13, road. Kyle. Yeah. A lot of picks. Our picks. All right. We'll talk more about those picks and where Arizona Cardinals fans can have some optimism here in our final segment, but folks, look, you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Well, luckily, game time is here, and it's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They've got killer deals on last-minute tickets, all-in prices. They give you a view from your seat and a best price guarantee. I mean, simply put, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I love the app. It's awesome. It's easy to navigate, and they also give you flash deals. There's a lot of times where I'll just be chilling pull up game time on my phone. I'll see what type of flash deals they offer uh, for events in my area. Plus they send the tickets right to your phone. You don't have to dig through emails. Once you purchase tickets, it goes right to your phone. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase terms. Apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, let's talk about it. Fight on, Fight on Monday. Monday. I am hurt. I am hurt, but I am not slain. I'm not slain. I'll lay me down and bleed a while and then rise and fight again. Wow. Did I you did have it, it up? I or did you? you wow. No, I don't have All right. it. Incredible. But this was that it's been drilled into my head. Yeah. We've only been doing this. Joe Marino. Yeah, we've been doing this a few times. Three years now. Uh, <laughs> so this so. is like our 70th time saying the poem 70th Kyle Kyle nailed it uh all right time to shift our focus to where all the optimism is and and look I think you did a really good job there at the end reminding us of just the amount of draft capital that this team has 13 picks Kyle Krabs six of them are going to be in the top 100 at least and that fourth rounder is probably 102, 105, something like that, you have a huge opportunity to add to your football team with young talent. Um, that first pick, you know, we'll see how the season ends, but right now it's right now it's the number three overall pick, right? I mean, it, it's probably not going to get too much further down than that. And so you're going to add some, have a real chance to add some premium talent to your roster. And I think you should feel really excited about that because if you look at the at the draft class that Monty Ossenfort just assembled, you're getting contributions everywhere, right? Paris Johnson, your starting right tackle. B.J. Ojolari has turned into a nice edge rusher for you this year. I think you felt his impact already. Garrett Williams, uh, the third-round pick, the corner, he's been starting games. Michael Wilson has had more production than I think a lot of people would have thought. I think he's got over 400 yards. John Gaines got hurt. He might have been your starting left guard. You, you probably needed him to be your starting left guard. You've been through like five of them this year. Clayton Toon got run. Catrell Clark you know, started games for them. Dante Sills has been a decent pass rusher. Like, that's a ton. That's a ton of contributions from young players. And Monty Ossenfort has a huge opportunity to add even more of that than this coming, this coming draft. So I think that's that's really where it starts. It's what you've received from your your draft class and what you can get out of the next one. And also, I, I don't think this should be overlooked either. Where are the Cardinals good and where are the Cardinals not good right now? Where do they, where do they metrically, they're, they're objectively bad. You can look at the wide, the passing game. You can look at the passing offense. You could also look at the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Right. they are 31st in scoring defense. Just as an example, Uh, they give up a lot of yards as well. This is a good class in just about every area that Arizona needs talent. So you should be coming into this year saying, hey, if we end up picking third and quarterbacks go one, two, Marvin Harrison Jr., that's probably the play, 
right? Mm -hmm. Take the best available player. Then you're going to get 17. Does the offensive line break favorably for you? No. How about an interior defensive lineman? Is is, uh, there somebody that makes sense there? No. How about an edge guy? No, I think that's probably about the range where some of the edge guys in this year's class start making sense to be picks. Uh, you may have a corner that's available. There's a few corners that I like. I think that is one of, the, one of the areas that Arizona has needs that I don't think there's a lot of talent available. So not that you in year two should be drafting for need, but it might align with that Houston pick. And by the way, uh, you, you if you've been a Cardinals fan, you've been rooting against the Texans all year. They got a tough stretch to close, and it sounds like mm. Stroud's not going to go again this week. Wow. So well, they won that last like, time, but yeah, right, right. I mean, they, they had Case Keenum come in and, and pull 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 it out of the fire at the end, but uh, they they got a tough matchup this week against the Browns defense. And then I know they played the Colts week eighteen to close. So you, you're sitting here rooting that team doesn't make the playoffs because then you start running yep. the risk of okay, well, yep. they win a playoff game, you might lose ten spots in the order. Huge. So yeah. right right now, Houston's on the outside looking in. You're looking at a top eighteen pick. You're hoping it stays that way. And if it does, I think that breaks very favorably for Arizona to get really good value. Or alternatively, some teams that have done this have had a lot of success by trading back and getting more capital for future years. You could really roll this thing year over year. You move back 15 spots into the first round. You get an extra first round pick for next year if this pick stays in the stratosphere of where it's at right now. Like you get a lot of opportunity mm-hmm. to not just be like, oh, we got 13 picks this year and five of them, six of them in the top 100. You can also say, hey, there's no reason why we can't get strategic here. Make sure we got six picks in the top 100 again next year. Like that, that's all on the table for that in a deep class the of op- areas that they need talent. The options are great, man. Uh, a lot of flexibility. I think we we saw Monty Austin Fort in his first year as the GM take advantage of those opportunities, and I think he'll continue to do that this year. But I think when you boil this all down, man, you got through your get-by year, your quarterback's healthy, and you just build. There's not hard roster decisions. Your coaching staff, your front office is what you're rolling with. You've got some young talent, and you got a lot of opportunities to add veterans, to add young players through the draft. It's a good spot to be. It's a good spot to be. I mean, obviously, you'd love to be competing right now and, and talking about a, a deep playoff run. That's not what's in the cards for you, pun intended. But I don't think wow. it's that far away. And Great opportunity this not, offseason. Not to be lost in all of this, you feel like the Rams, they went through their get-by year last year, right? Or I guess this year's technically yeah. their get-by year. Yeah. But they're they're seven and seven, courtesy of the effort of Matthew Stafford, who's an aging quarterback. You look at Seattle, and yeah, they they pulled it out on fire on Monday Night Football against Philadelphia because the Eagles just refused to give James Bradbury any help at all ever. <laughs> they just went right at he's been him. Been rough this year, man. Yeah. Yes, he's been he's he's not aging favorably as an outside corner, and they, they the Eagles didn't do him any favors either with how they called it there at the end. But those two teams are seven and seven. You're not that far off the pace from those two teams. Now you got to look up at San Francisco and know you got you're going to have to slay the monster every year. But I don't look at where Seattle's at or where the Rams are at and feel like, hey, if we don't knock the next two years out of the park, we we could very easily be positioning ourselves to be competitive within this division for annual playoff berths. Like all of that with the young infusion of talent should be on the table if they do this stretch right and you feel like they got some good early foundational pieces last year, but like now you're in critical mass for trying to achieve what they want to achieve. And you, you have your quarterback and you have your quarterback. That is going to do it for us here today on this episode of locked on NFL scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. We are out of here. Peace.